You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming. It's me on Twitter, the Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you with a Let's Play episode of Repeat. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. Alright. Yep, Haley was fighting the Remnant last time we left off, so let's jump right back in. Alright. She dives in, dodging each of its monstrous arms and barreled towards the Remnant's head. It merely laughed and bent backwards, its spine twisting at an impossible angle. Haley hissed as an arm suddenly grabbed her, pinning her arms to her side before hoisting her into the air. Uh-oh, that's not good. More massive hands grasped around her, slowly crushing her in their grip. She thrashed wildly but couldn't budge an inch. Haley screamed as she felt her bones groan against the Remnant's crushing grip. Her vision grew hazy. She couldn't breathe. The Remnant looked on gleefully as Haley's thrashing slowed to a stop. It turned its head back towards the ballroom. Ooh. Jesus, there's even a noose around its neck. Now, where was I before your rude interruption? Oh yes, the contest. There was a sudden flash of light. The air quivered as Haley's figure burst into a massive ash cloud and out of the Remnant's grip. Hmm. The Remnant's grin folded into a tired smile as he watched the ash reform into a towering figure. Oh dear. The air hummed with the cold, mechanical sound of ticking clockwork and gears. Ash darkened the sky as Haley's form slowly solidified from the swirling storm of dust. Slowly, the mechanical clockwork spread into wings that nearly touched the sky. Huh. Uh-oh. She took a step forward, the ground rumbling in her wake. It's been a long while since I've seen your true form. You're a right ugly beast, aren't you? Haley attacked. Meanwhile, inside the school ballroom, I was also dealing with my own beast of a situation. No one else seemed to be able to see Haley tackle the remnant here mere minutes ago. I rushed towards, I rushed forward to see to Sissel's side as he pried open his cart, oblivious to the supernatural battle raging outside. The lid felt very warm to the touch. It clattered to the ground to reveal Sissel's white chocolate sculpture, or what was left of it. Aww. The top of the sculpture was bubbling with molten chocolate. Melted chunks of the sculpture dripped down and pooled at the base like a used candle. The air was sickly sweet with the heavy smell of burnt chocolate. My throat felt dry. I turned towards Sissel, fear gripping my chest. He looked absolutely pale. Panic filled his eyes as he grasped the side of his cart, mouth agape. What? How did this- Several judges and contestants glanced over his shoulder and snickered at each other. You're planning on entering this mess into the competition? What a waste of time. I slammed my fist against the wall with a resounding thud. Again? I was supposed to change things this time around. I was supposed to support Sissel. My eyes squeezed shut and I hissed through my teeth. The devastated look on Sissel's face echoed in my mind and I let out a defeated growl. Suddenly, a voice whispered inside my head. Do not give up just yet, friend. There's still hope. Sissel watched Adrian groaning in frustration next to him. Despite the overwhelming fury and panic from mere moments again, Sissel felt his chest flutter with warmth. It was strangely heartening to see someone else so devoted to you. Sissel jumped when a judge approached him. I'm not sure how this happened, but I'm afraid I can't let you enter this mess into the competition. But you are hereby officially disqualified. Alrighty, hold it right there. Herschel pushed his way through the crowd with a cold scowl. With all due respect, with all due respect, sir, the contest hasn't even started yet. You can't honestly make a fair judgment right now. The judge almost laughed and gestured towards the pools of molten chocolate dripping down Sissel's sculpture. Can you honestly say this monstrosity stands any chance of winning? The contest starts in eight minutes, anyhow. My point still stands. You can't you can't make an honest and fair judgment until the contest actually begins. Second now, water time. I don't care what you think. You still have to follow the rules, you hear me? The judge and Herschel descend into a heated argument, neither side letting up. Sissel glanced between Adrian and Herschel, his heart beating against his chest like a hammer. Why are you two still fighting for him? He doesn't deserve this! Sissel froze as he realized how large the crowd around his sculpture had grown. Hundreds of eyes across the ballroom were trained on him, judging. His ragged shirt felt itchy against his skin. They were all ready to write him off at a glance, and this mess of a sculpture proved them right, but... Herschel and Adrian were still trying so hard to help him. He's gotta try something. Ignoring his pounding heart, Sissel stared quietly at his ruined sculpture. 
The top of it was mostly a molten mess, but the bottom parts were fairly intact. His cart still held his bag of sculpting tools, along with a dozen of along with a dozen of free spray cans Aiden Adrian insisted on taking for some reason. Sizzle swallowed hard, his mind racing. Through all the anxiety and indignation, an idea slowly formed in his mind. Oh, one second, y'all. Let me plug my phone in. There we go. It was insane, and it would never work, but... No more worries. No more doubts, right? He grabbed his bag of sculpting supplies and turned towards the judge. The official judging and scoring starts in eight minutes. He spoke firmly. It wasn't a question. The judge turned away from a furious Herschel and frowned. Well, it's seven minutes now. That's more than enough. I'll have my sculpture ready by then. The judge raised an eyebrow as this was a mess of a melted sculpture. Surely you're joking. This is ridiculous. Someone suddenly walked up behind the judge and placed a hand on his shoulder. Mrs. Corlise? Now, now, judge. If Sissel wants to spend the last seven minutes before the contest prepares project, what is the harm? As a representative of Gerani Academy, I say we give him this fair chance. Yeah. Even the old lady's speaking sense. Why are you being so difficult? The judge stirred between a firm Mrs. Corlise, a furious Herschel, and a curious murmuring crowd. Well, I suppose there's no harm in giving him a chance. It was all the confirmation he needed. Sissel scarcely heard the judge speak before crouching over a chocolate sculpture, carefully diagnosing its current state. He dabbed at the melted parts with a finger and scowled. It was still viscous and sticky to the touch. Adrian? I was by his side immediately. I'm here. How can I help? That firm assurance of support. Sissel felt his heart flutter again. Focus, damn it. Grab that free spray. The sculpture is way too liquidy and soft right now. I'm going to need you to continuously spray over the sculpture as I carve away at it. I nodded and grabbed a can of free spray as Sissel positioned his sculpting tools. Sissel gave me one last determined grin. We're going to make this work. Just watch me. Aww. The spray cans hissed loudly as a fine mist of white hit the sculpture, hardening it instantly. With that, Sissel got to work. His hands worked with practice precision as he carved away large chunks of melted chocolate. A steady waterfall of crumbled white debris was dusted into was dusted onto the ballroom floor while he chiseled away at his sculpture. Sissel was in a trance. Brows furrowed and eyes focused. The entire world ceased as he etched and sculpted. I couldn't help but watch in awe at Sissel's handiwork. It was like seeing someone breathing life into stone. The previously jeering and snooty crowd fell silent, suddenly entranced by the sight of Sissel at work. My can of free spray suddenly pittered to an empty sputter. I tossed it aside and grabbed another can, but something caught my eye. My breath caught in my throat. Sizzle's fingers were frosted over and white. They were trembling and moving rigidly, almost painfully so. What are you doing? Keep spraying! But your hands! We've got five minutes left. We have to make every second count! Don't worry about me. It's just a little frost. I wanted to argue, but the ticking clock and the sheer pressure of the situation weighed over my head. The reluctant nod, I continued spraying. Sizzle felt a flush of relief. In truth, his fingers were already numb, but he kept carving and chipping away at his sculpture. No worries. No doubts. He'll see this through to the end. Oh, one second, y'all. He'll see this through to the end. One second, y'all. The room was transfixed as chunk after chunk of white chocolate crumbled into the ballroom carpet. What was he trying to do? There was no way he could actually repair the whole thing in only seven minutes. Herschel watched from the crowd, his hands clenched into anxious fists. Jenny was gnawing nervously at her gloved fingers while Philip and Owen stared intently. Cecil noticed none of them and kept his eyes trained on his work, save for a few occasional glances at the clock. As the minutes ticked by, the crowd murmured to themselves fervently. Anxious excitement fluttered through everyone as time slowly ran out. Even the judge seemed reluctant to speak up as the last few seconds ran dry. All right, kid, your seven minutes are up. What have you got for us? Cecil finally put down his carving tools with a sharp clank his fingers trembling violently. The air was thick with clouds of residual free spray. The crowd leaned forward as the air cleared, eager to see his creation. Oh, man! She did a really good job. Jesus. The white chocolate simmered in the light as Sissel revealed his replica of the ancient Greek pantheon. Excited and impressed murmurs spread across the crowd as they gathered around. Even with the rough finish of the sculpture, the uneven carvings gave it a natural, edged, a natural aged and weathered appearance. He hollowed out his sculpture of the Capitol building and turned it into the ruins of the Greek Parthenon? Yes, the architecture is certainly similar. The fact that he used its rough appearance from his rushed work to fit into the Parthenon's age-day aesthetic. Clever, clever indeed. Cecil could scarcely believe his ears. He stumbled backwards in exhaustion, right into Adrian's waiting arm. You did it, Cecil. Cecil let out something between a laugh and a sigh. Yeah! 
Thanks. Thanks for sticking with me. Of course, I'll always be here to help you, man. Sizzle felt his face heat up, and he looked away bashfully. Let's just hope the actual judging and scoring goes well. That is a good question. As it turned out, the actual judging and scoring did not go as well as they had hoped. The competition continued as expected, with the judges examining every entry carefully. While Sissel scored very high, the main judge awkwardly announced that points were taken off due to the rushed nature of his project. The crowd booed loudly. Honestly, all the other entries paled in comparison to Sissel's performance. To add insult to injury, the highest scoring project looked like a cheap gingerbread house. And so, I am happy to announce that the second place prize goes to... Sissel! Sissel stumbled towards the judge's table blankly, still mildly in shock. He accepted his number two ribbon with a small, grateful smile. Oh, thank you! I'm proud of you, Sissel! Herschel shouted wildly from the back of the ballroom. But I gotta fucking say, getting second place is bullshit! He deserves better! Calm yourself, sir! Can security please escort this gentleman outside, please? The crowd booed and yelled so aggressively that the judges all stumbled backwards. Um, mm -mm. Um, anyway, finally, I'm proud to announce the winner of the regional culinary competition. The contestant who will move on to the nationals is... Phileas Caldwell. What? The fucking gingerbread house won? At this point, Jenny chucked the fire extinguisher in the judge's table and knocked it over. The crowd cheered. And now, now, I must ask everyone to remain civil. You are all horrible judges. Is this rigged? Mrs. Corlise, please! You're a teacher. I am pissed is what I am. How could this possibly be fair? Everyone in the ballroom who was not a judge murmured in agreement. A judge, the judges sweated nervously. But we assure you that Phileas' entry is indeed a work of great skill and craft. Frankly, his entry looked like a store-bought gingerbread house. You can't honestly say the judges aren't unbiased somehow. Something shifty is going on. Now, now, Philip, you can't say that. The judges must have picked old Phileas' entry because of his awesome skill and not because his daddy donated $100,000 to the culinary institution last week, right? Completely fair and unbiased. Did you two dig up dirt on the judges during the contest? Hey, we had to do something productive. The crowd grew even more unruly and closed in onto the judges' table. Jenny pelted one of the judges with an egg, and the crowd grew wild, eager to join. One second, y'all. It is water time. Soon the barroom was filled with flying food items and the screams of frightened judges. Through all this commotion, Sissel stood awkwardly to the side while holding his number two ribbon. Honestly, I didn't even think I'd make it this far. I placed a hand on his shoulder and scowled. Come on, man, don't sell yourself short. You worked so damn hard on this. Better make sure the results are worth your time. Sissel sighed with a fond smile. Thanks! Seriously, thank you so much for supporting me through all this. Of course. But even more seriously, I'm afraid Jenny's gonna murder one of the judges at this point. Across the room, Jenny was halfway through swinging a chair down upon one of the judges when Philip suddenly spoke up. You know what? Owen is right. Fair is fair, after all. Where is this Phileas? He should be here to receive his reward. The crowd fell silent. No Phileas answered. The judges were sweating bullets as they scanned the crowd frantically. Oh, whatever could have happened to him? To not even show up to his own victory? How unprofessional! Philip's sarcasm was thick enough to cut with a knife. Everyone in the ballroom whispered to each other curiously. Where was he? Phileas, it turned out, was still unconscious from being tased by Philip and stuffed in a locker right outside the ballroom. But the judges didn't need to know that. Well, I guess if he's not here to even participate in his own contest, the number one spot should naturally go to Sissel, right? The crowd showed loudly, loudly in agreement forcing even more ner more nervousness out of the judges. Well, I'm not sure if that's... Ginny raised her chair into striking position again. All right, all right. We, uh, hereby congratulate Cecil on winning the first place prize in the regional culinary competition. Cecil gaped, utterly dumbfounded as Ginny eagerly shoved him up to the judges' table. He stared at the small golden trophy cup for a solid minute before gently grasping it in his hands. I, I won? Oh, yes, you won the regionals. You're now welcome to attend the national championship in the coming weeks. The judge scrunched his nose at Sissel's ragged attire and sneered. But transportation and lodging at the event will be your own responsibility, by the way. Jenny's chair rose straight back into striking position before Owen stepped in. He hung an arm protectively around Sissel's shoulder and stared at the judge coolly. We'll make sure my buddy is well accommodated for his journey to the championship. Don't you worry. And who might you be? Owen bowed with a petty smile. Owen Lorelei, at your service. A, a, a Lorelei? The entire group of judges suddenly grew flustered and pale. Uh, forgive my rudeness, Mr. Lorelei. With your support, I'm sure your friend has nothing to worry about. And if you have a moment to spare, perhaps you could consider donating to our... Jenny finally dropped her chair and landed on the judge's toe with a solid thump. 
As he wheezed, Jenny beckoned Sissel and Owen to the door with a polite smile. Sissel wasn't paying any attention to the squabbling around him. His eyes were almost glazed over in a trance while staring at the small golden trophy in his hands. He won. He finally won. Alright y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and uh, check out that Patreon if you can, y'all. Anyway, I love you all. I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye bye